Okay, in this video I want to talk about the precise definition of a limit, and this is one of those things in Calculus 1 that uh, tends to drive people, I think, a little, a little crazy sometimes. So it's very technical. I think at this point, you know, in a class, a, a lot of you may have an intuitive idea of what a limit is, but this tries to really make things precise. So a couple remarks here. I'm not going to actually use this uh, definition uh, in this video to prove any examples. I will definitely uh, use this definition I'm about to show you to, to work out some, some examples in a different video. Okay, so we'll definitely, uh, uh, you know, see the definition in action. Historically, it took uh, mathematicians a long time to actually settle on this definition. And one more remark, if it makes you feel better, I remember hearing something somewhere, I think I read something, they said nobody really understands this uh, definition until they decide to become a, a, a graduate student in mathematics and start working on their masters. So um, I find that a little hard to believe. It's not that tricky, but it's certainly something that's a little uh, confusing and might be a little technical. Anyways, okay, so here's the definition. It says, let f be a function defined on some open interval that contains the number a, except possibly at a itself. Then we say the limit of f of x as x approaches a is l, and we write, you know, this notation, I'm sure you've seen this, the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l. Okay, here's the technical part that kind of bothers people. If for every number epsilon greater than zero, there's a number delta, such that if the absolute value of x minus a is greater than zero and less than delta, then the absolute value of the quantity f of x minus l is less than epsilon. What the heck does that last part mean? Okay, so again, intuitively, let's take a quick little example. All right, so here's my function f of x. What this definition is trying, the, the stuff at the bottom, it's trying to um, it's trying to formalize the notion of closeness, of being close to something. And we'll talk about these absolute value inequalities in just a second. That's all it's saying. It, this stuff at the bottom says, hey, if you've got a number close to A, then uh, the value of the function should be close to L. Okay, that's all it's saying. So let's look at this example. Okay, so... So in this case, right, as we get closer, if we take a value closer and closer and closer to 7, closer, whether we come from the left or the right, it says the function takes values closer and closer and closer to the y value of 4. So again, it said that it didn't have to be defined at a itself. You know, in my case, this is my a value, it's 7. And notice the function, I put an open circle there. It could be filled in, it doesn't have to be. And... My, my limiting value here is 4. So we have the limit as x approaches a, which in this case is 7, of f of x, that equals 4. Okay, I'm sure you've, you, you know, at this point, if you're, if you're dealing with the definition, I'm sure you've seen um, this notation and, and have seen, it, the, seen uh, finding limits from graphs. So, okay. So again, again, all that definition to me is saying, it says, if you take a number close to A, you'll have that f of x has a value that is close to L. Again, right, if we take a value close to A, close to 7, right, so maybe I take some little open interval here. I take some numbers close close to 7. Well, you know, if you look at, okay, so if I follow up here, and if I follow up here, if I take numbers in this little interval, you know, if my graph is relatively correct, if I take numbers that are close, that are close to A, so I'm taking numbers in this little open interval, I'm getting values on the y-axis that are, you know, relatively, again, close. We haven't made close precise, but you're getting values that are, that are going to be somewhat near the limiting value in this case of 4. Okay, so that's the idea. Take a number close to 7, you'll get some number, hey, you'll get some number on the y-axis that's relatively close to 4. That's, that's all we're trying to do. Okay, that's all we're trying to do. It says if you take a number close to A, you're going to have a value that's close to L. So let's look at just a random absolute value inequality. Let's, let's think about this, um, this inequality the absolute value of x minus 3 less than 0 
you know, in words, what does this say? What does this inequality mean to you? Does it just mean, you know, some random symbols? To me, I can put it in words, but let's look about uh, at solving it real quick. So if you recall to solve this type of absolute value inequality, okay, so we just remove the bars, then we also make an inequality where x minus 3 is greater than the negative of that number, so negative 0.01. Okay, so the solutions to the absolute value of x minus 3 less than 0 0.01, we'll get the solutions by solving this compound inequality. So to do that, we'll just add 3 to both sides. Well, positive 3 minus 0 0.01, that's going to be 2.99. 0 0.01 plus 3, that's going to be 3.01. So again, bear with me, this video is going to take a couple minutes because I think this definition is a little, can be a little confusing. So, okay, so there's our number three. It says values that are going to satisfy that inequality. It says we need numbers that are greater than 2.99, but less than 3.01. So any number inside of that interval, any number inside of that interval is going to satisfy this inequality. Well, again, in words, in words, what's happening? To me, well, we're getting, we're getting numbers. We're getting numbers that are, again, quote unquote, close to the number three, right? We're getting numbers that are within 0 0.01 of the number three. So that's all this absolute value inequality is saying. It says, hey, you're going to get numbers that are within 0 0.01 of the number 3. You know, if I make this number even smaller, 0 0.001 or 0 0.0001, the numbers that are going to work are going to be in an, in, in an even smaller interval. They'll be even closer to the number 3, right? If we use, say, instead of, X, uh, instead of using 0 0.01, suppose we use 0 0.001. Well, in that case, there's my number 3. And what would it be? 2.9, uh, 2.999 9 looks like it would work. We're going to get numbers in an even smaller interval that are going to uh, satisfy the, the absolute value inequality. OK, so this is the idea. Back to the definition. So if this number delta is small, this is like my x, you know, minus 3 less than 0 0.01. If delta is small, you're going to be really close to that number a. And if epsilon is really small, you're going to get y values really close to that number l. Okay, so that's all this definition is trying to cap encapsulate, this, this notion of closeness. So... A, a different thing to point out as well, one last thing I want to point out here before we actually start using this definition. You know, depending on the value you give me for epsilon, you're going to need a different delta. But that's the whole point. You, you specify this epsilon. You tell me how close you tell me how close you want me to be on the y-axis, and I'll tell you how close you need to be on the x-axis. And if you want me to be really close, Maybe I've got to find a really small delta, but the point is, you, you tell me how close you want me to be, I can always find some interval that works. If that happens, then we say the limit exists. So again, intuitively, if epsilon is a little bit bigger, I've got a little more wiggle room on the y-axis, which means around my a value, again, I'm going to have a little more wiggle room as well. Okay, I can probably take a larger interval. If I want my epsilon to be a really teeny tiny number, which means, again, I want to be really close. Okay, so maybe this is the value L plus epsilon. And this is going to be the Y value L minus epsilon. Well, now I'm going to need an interval that's smaller. I'm going to have to be, intuitively, most of the time, you're going to have to be closer, right? If you want me to be close on the Y uh, if my, my uh, range of numbers that work on the y-axis is, is small, you're probably going to need a smaller interval around a. So that's all that this definition is trying to say. It's trying to encapsulate this notion of closeness. That's all it's doing. So again, if you got through this video and it made perfect sense to you, hey, I am 
super impressed with myself. I would be shocked if many people got it on a first watch. But again, just think about this notion of closeness and what limits mean intuitively to you. And that's all those uh, absolute value inequalities are talking about. So um, in a couple videos and in another video, I'm going to prove um, the limit as x approaches 4 of 2x plus 3 equals 11 using the definition. I'm going to do another one with quadratics. The quadratics, you know, the, the linear ones are going to look like... Um, it's just going to feel like you're switching out steps. It's going to seem mechanical. The quadratic ones, you know, that one's going to be a little, uh, going to require a little bit more thought. Okay, so, all right, so, um, again, I'm getting a lot of great comments out there. If this video helped you, I would hope that you'll take a moment to maybe go over to Patreon and check me out and maybe, uh, you know, be a supporter. You can support for as little as a dollar a month. You know, that's like three pennies. So if you can imagine poor old Patrick sitting there on the street, wouldn't you throw three pennies at him every day and imagine how much fun that would be. So, all right, um, I hope this video makes some sense. And again, in the next one, we'll jump on to actually doing some concrete examples.